Okay, so this is what we're gonna be building. So the first thing you're gonna need is actually 3D Rise, which is the free plugin or effect that I built that will bring all our elements into the 3D space because we're gonna use the planes and we're gonna basically stack them up. And, and since we don't wanna have to go into Fusion and do the whole 3D composition thing, we're gonna be using 3D Rise. And that's gonna make it a lot easier for us to work with. Okay, now the first thing you need is your actual clips. In this case, we're gonna be using these clips, which I got from Pexels, but it's gonna, it's gonna look cooler if you already plan out your video beforehand. That way all your movement, all the camera movements are sort of like in sync and going in the same speed, direction, and maybe stabilized. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask on our object. In this case, we're gonna be using this door. We're not gonna need to track the whole thing in the color page, but we can just select a point when we're gonna start and then select it from there. Now, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can just use Magic Mask and that's gonna speed up the process, but plenty of people don't have it. So we're just gonna use the good old manual mode. All you have to do here is actually create a mask here or click here linear and then make sure to bring all the softness to zero. Now the next part is we're gonna just bring those points closer to the edges of the door. This doesn't have to be completely perfect so don't worry about it. Now that we have the mask in place what you can do is create a keyframe for the corrector one here which is the one that we're working on and then we're just gonna track forward. Now this process is not going to be completely accurate as always, so just make sure to go back here and then you can just adjust these by moving these and manually making sure that they are all in the right place. When you do that, since we already created a keyframe here early on, that's going to adjust automatically, but then we have to still go backwards a little bit and make sure to adjust these manually because sometimes that's what you have to do, right? After the whole mask is tracked and in place, we're gonna right click and then make sure that you add an alpha output. That's gonna open this blue little line and then when we connect these, there's gonna be a black section in the door right here. If we go back to the edit page and play these, you will see there's a black door already from the tracker previously moving there. But don't worry, we're gonna fix that by basically just copying these, hook, alt and then we can create that copy there now on this one we're gonna go to the color page in order to make sure you are in the correct one press d on this one and then we can adjust the other one without issues for this one we're gonna go and we're gonna go to the key section and make sure we invert these again and that's gonna be our door clip now if we go back and activate these we can see it looks just like a normal clip we're gonna be animating these but before we animate, we have to turn these into a fusion composition. The reason why we create a fusion composition here is because we're going to be adding that 3D rise effect onto these. And that sort of creates an extra layer of separation between both parts of our clip. That way we can later on uh, sort of like go back inside and open these in a timeline view and then make any adjustments that we need there, basically, like coloring or anything like that. We're just going to right click and create a new fusion clip and then press Alt F to find it in your media pool. And then we're gonna press F2 to rename these. That's, that way it's gonna be easier to find later on in case you need to change something. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other one. Now, the next step in this case is to add the 3D rise effect to our clips. For that, we're gonna go to the effects and we're gonna find the 3D rise version one and we're gonna add these to one clip. Make sure just to add it to the first one first because we're going to be working on it later. On 3D Rise, we're going to go to the pivot point and just double click the pivot point to zero, bring it back to zero. And we're going to go and set the Z position to 1.321 go. There it goes. That's going to fill the whole screen and then you are pretty ready to go. Now, why are we still in the same position here? Because that's where we had our marker earlier on and where the tracking happens or the tracking starts. Here we're gonna create a keyframe right here of the position and distance of all of our clips. If you want, you can also do the rotation, but that's not necessary, but it will be the same process if you wanna add that to the clip. Now we're going to go forward, let's say, and up until this point because we want the clip to completely transition into the new scene right here. So we're going to go and zoom in all the way 
And you can hold control here to make these a little bit more accurate and have the movement be a little bit more, yeah, accurate, let's say. Okay, now that we have that there, we can see that the door stays behind because as in the other clip, if you're thinking that we're just gonna copy this effect and then paste it onto the doors so that we don't have to do the whole process twice, then you're correct because that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna copy these and then we're gonna press Alt V and then go to fusion effect and then apply. And we can see the clip looks just like a normal clip again. Now, one thing you wanna do already here is go to the effects section and then go to fusion through 3D Rise. What we're gonna do here is adjust the spline here. You can put this into view and here, if you want, you can ease in or ease out your clips. Press T and then we can see that movement looks a little bit better like that. You can also add motion blur, but I would recommend you to add these later on after you have done all your changes because that will make the rendering process a little bit harder. We're gonna go to the edit page again and we're just gonna copy and paste that effect again here so that we have the splines also on the doors at the same time. Now, let me just tell you a couple of ways that you can use to animate the, the doors right here. If you wanna keep it simple, you can just use the position node here and just do something like that so that then it just goes to the side. And this works well with like a window or something or pretty much anything actually that you want, right? If you wanna do a bit more 3D, I actually just got this idea right now that will make it simpler because in the previous one, I actually used Fusion and then manually track this mask. But what we're gonna do is actually, I'm just gonna go inside this timeline and take that clip out of there. You can just copy and paste that if you want. And I'm gonna actually just leave this composition out there and I'm gonna paste that clip right here. Why are we doing this? Because I wanna create a mask on this door again to divide it into two pieces and then have it open like that. We're gonna go back to the color page and this clip that we have here, actually, let me just get rid of that so we can see this on screen. We have this clip right here. So I'm gonna go here where this mask tracking started and I'm gonna try adding a second serial node and I'm gonna connect this there. And then we're gonna connect that there. That way we have the door still and we're not gonna get rid of that tracker. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try to create another tracking point here. And in this case, we're gonna use a pen that way we can just more easily uh, draw these right through the middle of the door. And then just make it a little bit bigger because these becomes a bit bigger later on, right? Okay, and then we're gonna go to the tracker and we're gonna track four. But if you want, you can also just create a keyframe for the corrector too, which is this one right here. Okay, now we're gonna track forward and it didn't do that great of a job because it still moved a little bit but it's gonna be a lot easier than manually adjusting it in Fusion, right? So we're just gonna to have to go and make sure to adjust these so that it's in the middle of the door. Okay, and after we have that tracking done, what we can do now is we're just gonna to go to the edit page again and we're gonna create a copy of these. And then on this one, we're gonna invert that mask. Okay, since we're right here, in order to invert this door, we're just gonna click right here, this inversion control or button. And the only thing that you have to take into account is that these might just deactivate when you reach that next keyframe. So you're gonna have to go and manually adjust that. So if you have a lot of keyframe and adjustments, then you might have to do these a couple of times. Activate those clips again. Now we can see everything on screen. And now we can just create a fusion composition for that door and then rename these. And then we're gonna do the same for the other one. So now we're just gonna copy these like we did previously and we're gonna paste the fusion effect on these and on the other one. So now everything is tracked. Now we're gonna stack that 3D rise effect and we're gonna do so by just, first of all, finding that 3D rise right here. I'm just gonna add it to the right door. You'll see how it looks a little bit weird, but we can fix that by going here into the second one, 3D rise, and we're gonna go to adjust the pivot point, first of all, and then we're gonna set the, the position to 1.321. That way it's gonna be filling up the screen or coming back to the correct position. Okay, now that we are here, we can select when we want the doors to open. And to open these, we're gonna use the Y uh, rotation values. You can see how it sort of rotates like a door is open. Now, if you really wanna be a perfectionist, you're gonna have to probably play a little bit more with the um, like perspective of these, because right now it's sort of like going a little bit vertically and doors don't really open like that, right? 
You can also just slide it individually in here. Oh, that's the first 3D rise. We want to use the second one. Just experiment with it and try it out. Try it out, right? So we're going to create that first keyframe for the opening right here. I'm going to go a couple of frames forward and then just bring these open like that. And you'll notice that it's sort of in the middle. So we're going to have to adjust the position of the pivot point and move these to the right like that. Now you can see how the door opens a little bit more to the right. Although it's going a little bit uh, upwards, so you're going to want to maybe create another keyframe right here for the Y position and then adjust that a little bit just to sell the effect a little bit better maybe. But then after here, after you're close enough, you'll notice that the door will stay in there and come into the screen. So you want to go and create that another keyframe for the X value maybe like right here when it's a little bit further still. And then when it reaches that point, just make sure that it's completely off screen like that. That way, when you go in into the black uh, section, it's not going to show up at all. And then you basically just repeat that same process for the other door. And you can actually just copy these again and paste those same settings here, fusion effects, and that will create that same copy of the three drives. But that's going to open the door to the same si side. So we're going to have to go here and just change this pivot point to positive and we'll see how the door might open a little bit to the right in that case, like that. Okay, after you're happy with that result, all you have to do is create a composition of all of these three. And what we're going to do is just create a second copy of these, like these, maybe a little bit, a few frames forward. And then you, you will already see how we have that second one already coming there. This one is a little bit too much, so maybe just like four frames forward. And then once that opens, the other one comes in there. And then you can repeat that as many times as you want, actually. And after that's ready, then you have your first transition. If you want, you can adjust these here with like the rotation angle a little bit like that, playing a little bit with that. Just make sure that when you do so, you have to pay, take into account that sometimes you might encounter like a black borders here on your screen if you are zooming in too much a little bit, right? Or if you make these smaller, for example, you will already see here there's a black screen. If I deactivate these, you can see there's a space right here. So you might want to adjust those, those things by bringing these closer to your screen, to the other previous screen, right? Like that. And you can even just animate these if you want. Let's say you want to start this at zero. So when the door is still sort of opening and then we're going to come in all the way until the end and just move these like that a little bit. So it has a subtle movement. And then we're just repeating that same process as many times as you want, basically. So that is basically how you create this effect. All you have to do now is do that same process on your second scene and make sure you're just stacking those clips like these. Or if you want already, you can create another compound clip of these. But just remember that when you do these, you will still need a lot of rendering power. So your computer might start to lag a little bit. So you can always go to the playback section and try to use half resolution, right? And as you can see on this one, I actually just use the transform node, the normal transform node to just animate that light section to sliding to the right, I mean, to the left. And for the last one, which is these I wanted this one to start small, so I added a 3D rise effect to these actually. Let me deactivate so you can see. So I played around with the bending modes in here and I try to animate these so that it sort of like sells the effect a little bit more interestingly, right? And I actually had to zoom in really close and then zoom out because for some reason it was not like completely fitting on the screen and it will show up black sections right here. That's sort of like if you're flying through the window in here. Uh, you can add motion blur to these on the directly on the 3D right section. One thing I didn't do. So we're going to go open these in timeline. Since we're using compound clips or basically just copying these, uh, when you go to the effects section on one of them, since we're using this compound clip, if I go back, then we can open this second one you will see that the motion blur was also added to these. Similar to After Effects, when you add one edit one compound clip or compound layer, I think it's called. Uh, it's similar to that. Basically, it applies that same uh, settings or changes into the other ones. Now, there's one thing that I actually just realized as I was finishing the tutorial. 
There is one more thing that we can do to make these look a little bit better. And that is we're going to go to the effects section here and we're going to add a drop shadow. Now, this is going to take make it a little bit harder to render again, but I think that it's going to sell the effect really well. And you can adjust the drop shadow here in the open effects section. You can see how the shadow is and the drop shadow is showing up here a little bit. And if we deactivate these, you can see the difference in depth right here. And then you just copy these and go to the second uh, scene. And this was a compound clip of the actual door combine, right? That's what it's called combine. And we're just going to paste not the fusion, but the plugins. So once you paste that, you will see that drop shadow effect on the other one. And it has that effect there. And we're just going to paste that again here and see how that looks. And you can see how it plays that around there. This Paste that onto the last one too, and I want to see how it looks on the world uh, like that. Yeah, I think it looks really well with with the world like that. Let's see. Yeah, it sort of makes it blend a little bit better. So yeah, that was just one last tip that I wanted to mention before we finish this tutorial. So yeah, make sure to check this video next right here if you want to keep learning about interesting stuff in DaVinci Resolve. I'll see you next time here in Suave. Bye.